October come and gone. So here we are. This is my October wrap up. We're we're in for a lengthy ride. Um, October is very, very busy for me. As I've stated in previous October videos, there's a lot going on in my life in October. We've got birthdays, we have the Canadian Thanksgiving, we have Halloween, and Canadian Thanksgiving and Halloween, I go up north for the entire weekend. So that's two weekends out of the month where I am out of commission up north. Uh, and October is just, I find, there's lots to do in October. There's lots of action, there's lots of fun things going on, there's lots of events outside of the birthdays, the Thanksgiving, the Halloween. So there's a lot of uh, memories and experiences in this video. Um, some of them are witchish, witchy, witch adjacent, some are not. So I'm gonna break down the video into categories of experiences and purchases, some of which are also um, witch adjacent, most of which are witch adjacent, witch witchish, if you'll, if you'll say. Uh, and then um, what do we have? experiences, shopping, and deck stuff. That's why we're all here. I forgot the most important one, which is ironically the shortest one of this video. So we'll start with experiences. Um, there is a mansion near where I live called Parkwood, Parkwood Estates. Um, there's lots of movies that are filmed at this location. Uh, you will recognize some of them. Um, Ready or Not, which is that movie where she marries into this like wealthy family and on the wedding night they have to pick something from this, I don't know, a piece of paper from whatever, and she gets the hide and seek game and unbeknownst to her, the goal is for the family to kill her. They have to sacrifice her if they pull that hide and seek card. So that was filmed in Parkwood, super fun. Uh, the Boys on Amazon, that's filmed in Parkwood. There is a ton. Murdoch Mysteries is filmed there. Uh, Handmaid's Tale is filmed there. So we did um, Parkwood Fall Fest, which was just like a fall market. I did not buy anything. Uh, I made up for it later though, as you'll see. Uh, so that was just really fun. It was just a really cool fall thing to do. Again, something in October that's fun to do that kind of adds <laughs> to everything else to do in October. Uh, and then my mom and I did the servants tour. So there are a plethora of tours that are available at Parkwood and we've only not done a couple of them. The servants tour was one of them. So we did that this month and filming is limited. They only let you film in a couple of locations. So I took a video of the kitchen for you guys. Uh, there's a couple things. So this mansion was completed in 1917, I believe. Uh, it was R.S. McLaughlin, the founder of GM Motors, who built this house for himself and it's now been turned into a mansion. Uh, filming location, etc. So in this kitchen, there are a couple of things that are original to the owners, and it is the um, the vent over top of the cooking area that is original. There's a wooden chopping block, a wooden wooden cutting block. It's original, and the table in the middle is original. So it's cool to see those three things um, that they actually used in that time. Uh, so the servants tour just basically takes you around and shows you the servants' quarters of the mansion. So we hadn't done that one really cool, really fun. If you're in the area, if you're in Ontario, I highly recommend checking out Parkwood. Even if you're not gonna do a tour, you can still check out the grounds in the summer. They do close them in the winter because they get pretty icy. So uh, you can just show up. As long as they're not filming, you can show up and walk the grounds. Well worth it, definitely, definitely worth it. Then, of course, there's the Northern Lights, which a lot of people did see. It's not my first rodeo with the Northern Lights, but I did this time instead of just peeping them in my backyard, I drove up north to see them, just like 15, 20 minutes up north to a little conservation area. Uh, and many, many people had this plan as well. So I was not the only one there in the parking lot. Uh, now they are more difficult to see with the naked eye. I took a video of how they look to the naked eye, but when you use your camera, it's, it's like you're looking at a whole other world. It's crazy to look at the sky that's almost black and then you just tilt your camera up to it and it's just like this secret light display is happening right before your eyes and you're not even aware of it. So that was a lovely experience, um, except in the photo with the green or Aurora Borealis, there is a house. So that house is across the street from the conservation area. Uh, and he's not doing it in the photo I took, but he or she, whoever lives in that house, 
uh, actually got in their car and turned it around and shone their high beams on us the entire time, which was really unfortunate and just kind of soiled the experience a little bit. I mean, I, I still stuck around as long as possible because I didn't want them to think it was affecting us. So like, I couldn't see anything, but I'm still like taking pictures and pretending like they're turning out because I did not want this person to win. Uh, but it was kind of sad because there was a woman next to me who had her tripod out, her high tech camera, and she had said it was really unfortunate because uh, it was her first time ever seeing them. So really unfortunate. I understand that you probably wouldn't want people essentially taking pictures of your house, but you can't see anything. We're not looking at the house. We're looking at the geometric storm that's happening above it. Like, calm down. So that was a little bit unfortunate, but it's always stunning to see them. And I did come home and they were kind of fading as I came home. So I did take more in the backyard, but they're not even comparable to what was just slightly north of my house. So that's always such a magical experience. I love seeing them. I love like this time they did seem to be more pink. I don't think I've ever seen them that pink. It's usually like the greens and the turquoise and a little bit of purple. Um, I'd love to see white ones. Uh, although I do think you have to go to like Iceland or something to see the white ones. Then Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving was a little different this year. We had to go up the week after actual Thanksgiving. We had stuff going on, so it just worked out to celebrate Thanksgiving the weekend after. So I head up north to my grandma's to do this and I always love going there this time of year. It's stunning with all the trees and everything on the ground. It's in the smells, it's just gorgeous and uh, I, dug up my grandma's dahlia bulbs for her. That's something I do for her uh, every time this year. There was way more than I remembered there being this year. My back, my back was a little sore. Uh, and then I always go to the back forest, which is steps from my grandma's house. My great grandparents uh, planted those trees, those pine trees from seeds. So I always like to go there and walk through it any chance I get while I'm up there. I try to spend as much time in the woods as I can. I do know that my time is limited with this space. Um, eventually there will come a time where I won't get to go there anymore. Uh, and that is, I don't like to think about it, but I just try and enjoy the time that I have. The property has been in my family for, we calculated over 135 years. We just couldn't get past the 135 years. We're not sure who had it prior to that. It could have still been in our family, not sure. Uh, so at least 135 years in my family. So I have been making a conscious effort to spend time in the forest and just really absorb it, really absorb the smells and the feelings. I'd love to just like lie there, but there are ticks. My grandma has got ticks as recently as like a couple years ago. So um, yeah, maybe not lie, maybe not lie down on it. Um, so that's, that's my Thanksgiving experience. Um, now let's get into <laughs> The things that I maybe bit off more than I can chew, no, more than I wanted to chew, let's put it that way. So my unit at work is super fun when it comes to Halloween. They go all out. They do kind of like potlucks where you bring in treats. They have contests, they have trivia. So um, we did have uh, the whole week of Halloween. There was all kinds of stuff going. So they did send out a trivia email. Uh, so you can pause to read those little trivia things. And if you get them right, congrats. Uh, the movie one with the pictures, there's 40 movies in it. I only got 21. I am ashamed to say I only got 21. But then we get treats and then there was also a uh, cubicle decorating contest. This is where I over celebrated. I decided to turn my cubicle into Hogwarts. What I really wanted was the Hogwarts ceiling that I've seen on TikTok. I cannot take credit for this. I've seen it on TikTok uh, where you kind of have like a board, you put you tape lights to it, then you tape cotton over top of it, then you have the hanging Hogwarts ceiling candles uh, and they come with a wand remote control which is so fun. Um, so I spent a lot of time and money making this and I struggled with how I was going to attach it to the ceiling without it being a fire hazard. Uh, and ultimately we did magnets because the beams between the panels are magnetic, they're metal. So we stuck magnets to the back of the Bristol board and poof, that worked out great. I thought my main problem was solved. No, uh, I less than 24 hours later, all the cotton fell off and was on the floor of my cubicle. Uh, so we had to go back and troubleshoot. I tried many different methods to make them re-stick and the only thing that worked was actually like 
pins, sticking pins, because it's a, a thick Bristol board with the foam in the middle, and sticking the cotton in with the pins really helped. So this is the final result, and I put so much time and so much effort and so much money into it. I painted that basilisk snake by myself. Uh, that took three days with drying time, so that kind of started to get a little stressful towards the end because I, especially when it fell apart, it fell apart on a day, it fell apart right before the Halloween party weekend, which we'll get to. Uh, so I had four days without being in the office and I knew that my desk had just fallen apart after all these people had seen it and praised me for it. Now it's in shambles and it looks like it melted off. But anyway, uh, it was really fun and I did win first prize for cubicle decor. So it paid off, it was all worth it. I got a Starbucks gift card and this, I don't know if I can get the whole thing on frame, this super cute tumbler. I think it's a 40 ounce tumbler, very cute with, we've got a rubber straw, but it's metal on the inside, great for keeping your drink cold. Love it, totally worth it. Uh, now I have to take it down. I actually don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna leave the Hogwarts ceiling up. I might take the witch hats down, but leave the Hogwarts ceiling up forever because it was that painful. Okay, Halloween party. Every year I am so blessed to be able to go to my friend's cottage who, I mean, this is only her third year of doing it. So every year means this is the third consecutive year. Uh, she goes all out. Big Halloween, guys. Big. Uh, uh, she does a theme. She doesn't tell us what it is, so we don't know what the theme is until we get there. Although I think next year she might change that up because it would be really cool to cater your costume to the theme, um, which would have been interesting this year because this year's theme was carnival. So carnival, but carnival. Uh, and they have games. Uh, it's a potluck, so you bring a spooky treat, and it is so much fun. This year I went as Mia Wallace from Pulp Fiction. I was going to originally go as Patrick, oh I can't remember his last name, I always want to call him Patrick Bateman, but I don't I don't know if that's it, from American Psycho with the rain jacket and the axe and the blood splatter. I was going to do that, but when I was polling people that weren't coming to the party, they didn't know who that was. So I second-guessed myself and went as Mia Wallace. Um, that syringe is, listen, I went through so many prototypes trying to figure out what the best one would be and what one was the very first one that came to mind and it was eyelash glue. Um, so what I had to do, I, I coated the syringe, I cut off the nub so it would be flush. I coated the syringe in eyelash glue and let it dry for a really long time. Like we're talking like a minute or two. And then when, because it was so coated, it was still fairly wet. So I just kind of, tapped it with my finger and then stuck it on my skin and it was good to go. Although my face did get dunked in some water when we were bobbing for ducks, long story, uh, and it turns out it's not waterproof. So just so you know, it did come off, but I quickly went in and fixed it, whatever, we were fine. Uh, and yeah, so I, I'm gonna post a picture. I did not win best costume this year. I won years one and two. I was a croc, a giant croc shoe on year one. Year, year two was last year, I was Medusa. And this year I, I went low key the picture of me and my friends that I'm about to post, the woman with the white hair with the alien on the back, she's the one who won best costume, very well deserved. She absolutely deserved it. It was hilarious. There was lots of dancing this year um, and to see her dancing on the dance floor with this alien, I kept thinking it was a man that was wrapped himself around her. It was so well done. It lit up. I don't know if you can see it in the photo, but the tips of her fingers lit up, his cape lit up. It was props, props to you. She deserved best costume. So that was a lot of fun. A uh, little hungover the next day because there were giant syringe jello shots. Like last year they were the size that I had on my glued to my body. This year they were like, they were huge, giant. Uh, and I did a lot of them. So they were, they were tasty. I mean, it was worth it. And then my last memory, this one is going to segue into the first section of my purchases. So I got to go to my favorite crystal dealer, Ariana at Equilibrio Gems. It's about an hour away. Uh, and I made the trip because I wanted to pick up something for my mom's birthday and I didn't have time for shipping. So I drove the hour out there and it was my first time being at her location. I've been planning on going there for so long, but it's just the timing and it's by appointment only, whatever. So I finally made it there. I picked up an order, bought my mom cute little tumble for her birthday, uh, and I was in heaven, absolute heaven. So I'm gonna explain this more in the shopping clip, but she does Instagram live sales and you can have an open box. So some of the purchases I've made from this store 
were from September. It is a lot. It does look like I bought a lot of crystals, but it was kind of almost over a two month period. It was September and October because she has a 30 day open box policy. So it looks like a lot, but it was for the next two months. So here we'll go. Uh, segue into the purchases that I made in September, October. Okay, so we're segueing from my trip to Equilibrio Gems into my crystal purchases. So we're now in the purchases section of the video, but I am refilming this because, full disclosure, something hilarious happened. I filmed all the crystals and something told me to watch, watch it back before I dissembled my little setup here, disassembled, there we go. Um, and thank God I did because it's hot. I'm sitting in the sun right now. This isn't in the sun, but my body's in the sun. So I'm, I was sitting here in a sports bra and um, you could see me in a reflection of a crystal like the entire time. <laughs> so uh, we're refilming. Uh, this happens, friends. Um, so just uh, watch your videos before <laughs> you post them. I'm sure I would have noticed it in editing, but I would have been really mad because I would have had to go back and redo it. But anyway, so here we are again. Let's get into what I purchased. So Equilibrio Gems. We love Ariana. Um, her prices are phenomenal. They are so good. Um, I've, I'm a, I've been buying crystals for years and her prices are the best prices she's there's something here that i'll uh, hopefully i'll remember to mention it that is way more expensive uh when i looked it up other places so highly recommend she does instagram live sales which is how i get most of my stuff her store location as i said is about an hour away so um the instagram live sales are great you can have an open box for 30 days so that helps with your shipping if you if your open box reaches $150, your shipping is free. But if your open box does not hit that $150, at least you're not spending the shipping every time you place an order. So keep that in mind. That does help. Also, disclaimer, my nails, these are sticky press-on nails with the sticky tabs that I put on for my Halloween costume. Um, and I didn't think they would last the day. And turns out I can't get them off. So you can see my blue nails underneath. We're going to um, ignore those. So <laughs> let's... Round two, let's do this again. So first off, um, I got this purple jade. This was, um, she has little add-ons during her Instagram live sales. So this was an add-on from her Instagram live. Love this purple jade, it's excellent for luck. So it's going to go in my purse. Um, as far as more little ones, we have this sardonyx sphere. Um, this was, another add-on I believe and I just the coloring is just perfect for this time of year super cute I, I'm obsessed anything that has a good banding sign me up so this cute little sardonic sphere which is not going to behave so we'll put it back here um something I do not own and I'm a sucker for things I've never heard of and don't have already this is volcano agate so there is a section here it's this stripe that runs down here it is uv reactive and she did during the live sale she did put a uv light on it so we all got to see that they were in fact uv reactive so there's that little moon um this little guy this is um, fire quartz it's just quartz with iron inclusions in it that give it that orange look um, this one I bought in store and the reason I bought it was because I have this goddess she is a stunner I did not get her from Equilibrio gems I've had her for a few years I believe it was a COVID purchase um, this is probably one of the biggest pieces I have. I, actually, it is the biggest piece I have. I'm, I typically stick to the smaller ones because I like to toss them in my purse. I like to toss them in my bra, in my pocket, wherever. But this one, it was just like, they were meant to be. They're meant to be family. So um, this one's gonna sit right next to it on my little dresser here that houses all of my crystals. Um, next. We have this Ocean Jasper Cloud. Um, this was one of the ones you could, what's up? You could see <laughs> my uh, level of undress in the reflection of this one. Um, so 
stunning, beautiful. Uh, Ocean Jasper, I hadn't seen it kind of with these red purpley plumes before. This looks even better in the sunlight. Love it. So she's here. Um, we also have this pink amethyst in the sunlight. The sparkles just give. Um, not so much in this lighting, but stunning. We have a Garden Quartz. Garden Quartz has quickly become one of my favorites, and unfortunately the lighting makes it a little tricky to see. But this piece was one in store and I loved it. It's, it's like a little terrarium. It's like a little universe in there. So cool. The depth is just crazy. This one, I'm gonna have to insert a piece or a video of this in the sunlight because you can't see it at all right now. But this is Rainbow Obsidian. I do not have Rainbow Obsidian. I have Silver Sheen and of course, regular Obsidian. Um, but this is just a stunner. And the reason I bought it was because it reminded me so much of the Northern Lights. So it was great to have, get that piece. It was just stunning. And now this, it's not doing it right now. Maybe it is and I just can't see. But when I put it down on the table, the whole rest of the video, you could see me in it and you could see <laughs> my, like I said, level of undress. Uh, we have another Sardonyx Tumble. This one um, I bought in store. I bought my mom one for her birthday as well. Um, but this, this one is just so soothing. There's a little perfect thumb divot. And that's why one of the reasons why I love Tumble so much because you can just almost meditate with them. They're very calming. You can carry them with you everywhere. So that's why I love those sizes. And another great one for the coloring of this time of year. Here we have a, I had to, and you'll see a white plume agate, triple moon, goddess stone. This one, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there are little um, druzy pockets that make it sparkle. Uh, I don't have any white plume agate. This also, it has a very similar feel. I find that ocean jasper has a weird feeling to it. This one has that, that same kind of weird feeling. Um, okay, let's we'll do this one. This is angelite. And I have a piece of angelite. A couple little tumbles. These are really good for connecting to obviously your angels. I, I don't know that I subscribe to that belief necessarily, but great for um, divination and intuition. But this is the one I have and it's not like there's nothing special about it. It's not sparkly. I didn't even know that angelite sparkled until I got this piece. And I, again, I don't know if the lighting is going to be my friend. It looks more of a, a shimmer in this lighting, but it does sparkle so lovely and so a couple of these came with these plastic stands so there's two ways you can use them you can organize them that way or you can organize them this way and everything stands on them so the triple moon goddess came with one of those the angelite slab came with that and the next piece, I believe, came with one. This is Amethyst Stalactite. This is the piece where during the Instagram sale, I actually went to like Etsy, I looked online, I was Googling stalactite because I don't have a stalactite, which is basically just a slice of a cluster, I guess. Um, but pieces smaller than this were double what I paid for this piece. And they were significantly smaller, like I'd say like two thirds smaller. Um, so this was a sale, it, I, it was on special on this particular live sale. So I saw this one in store and didn't grab it. And then I ended up getting it after it went on sale during one of the live sales. So it also came with one of those stands. Um, where can we put it where you'll see it, where it will shine. All right, now let's get into the bigger pieces. Um, okay, so I already filmed this part and I've 
put some of them where I can't reach them. All right, agate, an agate slab. I am going through a major slab moment right now. I don't really own a lot of slabs. The only slab I own is, it's probably a little dusty, this piece of fluorite. It's the only slab I've ever purchased, also from Equilibrio Gems, but it's tiny. It's a little guy. Um, now I've kind of got into the bigger ones. So when I opened this, it was this way, and it took me a couple of minutes to realize that it looks like a beach with a lake or an ocean and a sun or a moon. It's stunning. I did purchase these slabs with a specific intention, um, which I'll get to in a minute. This one I'm, I'm not even gonna use for that intention. It's on. It's been on my nightstand and it came with a stand as well, a little more of a sturdy stand. So it's been on my nightstand like this since I bought it and I love it so much. Again, the coloring was very great for this time of year. So we have that slab with its stand. We have this slab. This is Mexican fluorite. Love this. The only problem I find with those live sales is that things look so much bigger on camera. So this was the first slab I bought and the intention I had behind it was to use it in videos and use it to put cards on. I have a really hard time sliding, especially if I have a tarot cloth, which I don't because I didn't want to take away from how the crystals looked, but I have a hard time sliding the cards off. So I was like, you know what? First of all, crystals are cleansing for tarot cards. Um, fluoride is supposed to be great for your memory as well. Um, so I often forget what things are called during filming. So I was like, well, let's test that theory. Um, so yeah, it's going to be something that I plop my cards on for videos or even reading for myself. It's just gonna have its own little whatever. So cool, cool, cool. This one did not come with a stand, um, but it's full of rainbows. I don't know if you could see them when I was talking, but it is so pretty. There's lots going on down here. And if you spin it, there's some going on down here, here. If you flip it and reverse it, Missy Elliott, anybody? It's so good, it's so good. Um, then the last one I got, this one was big money. Uh, this is one of the biggest pieces I have now next to that, um, Fire Quartz. Isn't she a stunner? She came with a metal stand as well. You can't even, I can't even get all of her on this video in frame. So I purchased this one again with the same intention. It's a bit larger, so the cards fully fit on this one in, and the Bohemian Gothic is a bit of a bigger deck as well. Um, agate with probably a little bit of amethyst in there. Oh, there's a rainbow. I don't know if you're catching that. Um, but this one has been kind of on my altar space. I probably will use it in videos, but it's, I don't know. I just want it on display for myself all the time. I don't know, like the depth is just, we have a little peekaboo. I'm obsessed. I am absolutely obsessed. It does look like it, I bought it like this. It does look like there was a break, which would have made it look like a ghost if they were both fully intact there those nubs oh i just love it so yeah that one's been on a stand on my altar space uh where i can see it every day which i'm i'm obsessed with it i i, I love this purchase it was it was a pricey one this was a pricey purchase but uh i'm here for it okay now we can insert my other purchases that are not crystal related who absolutely betrayed me in this first filming but anyway uh i thought we were done with crystals psych just kidding um so i wanted to mention when you spend a certain amount of money with equilibrio gems you get a free crystal drip baggie of crystals 
So I have a couple of these now. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with them. I, I was kind of playing around with one of them and I have this like little metal bowl. Um, it's real silver, I got it on eBay actually. It was a friend of mine her family's company and her name, her last name is on the back of that, which is incredibly cool. Um, this is also from Equilibria Gems, but a while ago. So we're just going to, these are the crystals you get in your crystal drip. They're really good for like spell jars if you do anything like that. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but my friend's name is stamped on the back. So pretty cool. Uh, so let's see if we can get those in there without losing any. I wanted to have the goddess like stand, but she's kind of untrustworthy. So it does kind of look cool. Get that big one out of the way. With her just like laying in it. So I kind of like that, but you get those baggies. But the reason I'm talking about this is because in one of those baggies, so in a bag, you get um, a couple larger crystals. In this one, we had this rose quartz heart. And then this is how this crystal was in the bag. I didn't know what it was, but I opened the bag and slid it out. And this is what I saw. This is crazy. It's like a scene out of a Sahara desert. Absolutely nuts. I'm not even sure what it is. I thought it was mookite. The, the, this is dendritic inclusions, the black there. I don't know what that would be. That kind of sort of uh well it looks like a little bit of a quartz i'm not sure i don't know uh but anyway this isn't that nuts absolutely nuts and that was in my free giveaway crystal drip baggie love it so incredibly cool so yeah maybe we'll just yeah i don't know i don't know how what i, I mean other than spell jars i have crystal chips that I've purchased um, but now I have a lot more the other thing I wanted to mention inside these crystal drip baggies um, there's lots I see lapis lazuli I see sodalite obviously clear quartz um, there's a tiger's eye a little bit of peach moonstone it looks like that's probably clear quartz, another peach moonstone. There's lots in here. There is um, fire quartz as well, but a lot of them have this crystal here. And I don't know if the light will pick up those sparkles. So this is called, well, it's goldstone. This is obviously blue, blue goldstone. Just a heads up, this is man-made. This is a man-made crystal. All goldstone is man-made. Very pretty, but man-made. Just just FYI, in case that means something to you. Um, but like the fire cords, that's heat treated probably. Oh, look, at, I don't know if that's sparkling on camera, but maybe if I was in focus, it would be. There's one that's just oh, stunning. So yeah, these are, these are great for spell work, spell jars. I don't know if that's shimmering on camera like it is for me, but yeah, I have a few of these little baggies and this one obviously just fired off that stunner. Okay, now we're done with crystals. All right, so I bought some Florida water. This is the first time I've ever owned or purchased Florida water. I got this one from Madame Phoenix. I believe she's out of Toronto. Uh, so I got this idea from someone in Thea's uh, Discord for the secret member space for the Garden of the Goddess, Garden, <laughs> Garden Goddess Tarot anyway. Uh, so someone said that they use Florida water to, they spritz their hands first before touching their tarot decks and I really liked that. So I put some in a little spritzy bottle. Uh, I don't know if it's always green or it's just this company that does it. Uh, as far as the smell goes, um, it's potent. It's very, very potent. All natural Florida water, blessing purification. Uh, it doesn't say what's in it. 
but it is it is quite potent. Um, but it has alcohol in it for sure because it dries really quickly when you spritz it on your hands, which I really like because you're about to touch a tarot deck. I have oils that I've used to anoint my hands first before touching a tarot deck, but I don't like that it leaves a film on my hands and then therefore a film on my tarot decks. So I really like that. Um, I, I remember the name of the individual that put it in Thea's Discord, uh, but I don't want to call them out specifically just in case. So you know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching uh, another witchy adjacent witchish purchase I made is these washi tapes. Uh, I wasn't even going to talk about these, but they're just too good not to. Um, so they're tarot washi tapes. Like they have tarot sayings and tarot information on them. So those are really cool. This one's huge. I just got these off Amazon. I needed to hit the free shipping. So that's why, where are we here? That's why I bought them. So they're gonna be used in journaling. Uh, what's another really cool tarot one? I love this eye one, love it. They're just so good. I was actually really impressed. Judgment calls the world, completes a cycle, ends another greets. This one. Yeah, so these are really cool. I had to share them because I know you would all appreciate. So they're gonna be used in journaling. Another cool thing I got that I feel is witch adjacent, adjacent, <laughs> witchish. Uh, Laura's beading art. I found her on Instagram. She paints these and then puts them on prints and then puts a resin over them and makes an ornament. And I am obsessed. They were not that expensive. So I got one. The reason I got this background was because it reminds me of my grandma. It was between this one or two ghosts uh, at a fire pit, which I also really liked, uh, fire pit in the wilderness. But this is the one that I opted for and I love it. So that's really fun. What else do we have? Okay. Going on to the not as witchish as the other ones, but I got a Hobonichi. This is my first ever Hobonichi. I got the Techo uh, Day Free. This is the A6. It is small, friends. Like, it is small. The A5 was sold out by the time I opened the email and saw that the company had had these. So, uh, it's small. Or small. Um, and I couldn't help myself, so I did start decorating. I put this little envelope with all of my extra stickers in it. Just did this yesterday. And then I went like ham. I like, I had to stop myself because I like I fully decorated for September of next year. Like oh, it's crazy. I'm silly. Silly, silly, silly girl. But I did get some stickers from an Instagram company, um, an Instagram person, uh, to go over the months with these cool colors. Really like that. Um, so I ordered those and they came, I got the, these ones as well. So these are, a, it's one strip per page. Uh, she also has strips that go down here that just make them black and white. So it's got the number and then the letter for the day of the week. Um, I haven't ordered those yet. I might, uh, I don't know. Um, so I had fun going through and putting all those stickers down but this one, um, so we've got these calendars. It starts in December, so I will be starting to use it in December, next, technically next month. But then we have all these pages, which are just for writing. So it's gonna be um, like a, a journal type thing, but a more visual. I plan on using a lot of my stickers in here because I have so many I have to get rid of. Washi tapes, so many I have to get rid of. I have washi tapes that are old so old in fact that they have started yellowing <laughs> so i have to use some of them um and then i have a little tiny printer that prints like photos from your phone that i mean this size they'll take up 
a, a large chunk of the page. But right now, what I'm doing with those stickers is they're, they're going in my everyday journal, like my Dear Diary, today XYZ happened, that journal. Um, and they, it just doesn't feel right to put them in that journal. So I'm gonna do kind of more visual journaling in here with stickers and washi tapes and, and those sticker, insta what's that printer called? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Um, so that's my Hobonichi and my Hobonichi stickers. The last update I wanted to give for uh, shopping money things, I know I alluded to this in my last video, the Saint Soleil Celestial Journal. They have confirmed it will not be happening for 2025. Womp womp. Um, but they did put up something on their Instagram where they took a poll about whether people would be interested in a, um, I guess, digital version. And when I, at the time that I voted, a lot of people said yes. So fingers crossed that they do that um, because this has been probably my favorite part of 2024. Very, very sad, but she did say they are bringing it back for 2026. So there's that. Okay, that's everything I bought. I told you it was a lot. I told you I bought a lot of stuff in October. It was a big, big, big segment <laughs> this month. So I had, I had a lot of fun spending money this month. Uh, I'm gonna try and take it easy for the month of November. I, already, I did buy a deck though, a deck is coming. But anyway, um, deck stuff. We'll segue into, into deck stuff and then I'll come back and chit chat about that for a sec. Now, deck stuff. We're on to the deck stuff for the month of October. Not a whole lot of updating. I didn't buy any decks. Um, obviously that would have been in the purchase section. So I didn't buy any decks, but the deck that I worked with the most um, shocked me. Absolutely shocked me. You know what? <laughs> We're gonna do this. We're doing it. Um, the Bohemian Gothic. I did a tarot challenge with the Bohemian Gothic deck. And at first I kind of, I was gonna use it for the full 31 days and then I thought maybe I'll switch it up halfway through and use a different deck. Um, but I was enjoying this deck so freaking much that I stuck with it for the full 31 days. This deck shocked me. It has given me all of the insight, all of the accurate readings, all the accuracy. Um, I'm stunned. I'm absolutely stunned. I thought this would be more of like a kitschy Halloween deck. Friends, it is not. Not at all. Um, and what actually ended up happening was the types of readings that I was getting from this deck, it feels like this deck knows me. And I honestly don't, the only one that's kind of come close to that for me is the Divine Feminine by Kokorina. Uh, but this one, I mean, when there were shifts in the month, when there were, oh, my sun catcher is kissing it. Um, it felt those shifts. I feel like it gave me the message I needed to hear for those shifts in situations or happenings, I guess, is more accurate. Um, what I did notice about this deck was that it did not give me a lot of major arcana cards. I pulled a lot of minors with this deck, um, which was also very interesting because I feel like the messages that it gave me were more on the everyday stuff, the everyday situations and happenings that were going on in my life. So, um, yeah, this will be an all year user for me. I was on the fence as to whether I would keep it as a Samhain kind of September, October deck. Uh, no, it's gonna be an all year user because I do feel like it knows me so well. So blown away, um, I used it all 31 days and loved it. I'm not gonna put it away just yet. I don't think I don't think we're done. I mean, we're still in Samhain, so I don't think we're done for the season. Um, not that I would be putting it away for the season, but how are my edges doing? I know my nail caught on a couple of them. Oh, we're okay. Um, but oh, love, 
love 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 so I'm still gonna work with that one probably heavily in the next couple of weeks um, but yeah, so the tarot challenge was from uh, Healing Through Tarot from Lux Aura Studios Instagram. It was from October 2023 and I really liked it. I tend to go through and cherry pick which challenges I want to use. Um, it did talks about ancestors, uh, which I don't do ancestor work. So that was a little bit different for me to have to deal with those ancestor questions. And I feel like the deck handled that and reflected that beautifully. Okay. So that's it, that's everything I bought and all my deck stuff. So I did use more than just the Bohemian Gothic um, for the month of October. I have a lot of October decks that I need to work with. I, they, they need to be used in the month of October. Um, but the Bohemian Gothic was one that I used the most. I spent the most time with it. I was the most impressed with it. I was the most blown away with it, obviously, from my clip. Um, but the other decks I did use was the Zombie Tarot, um, the Maybon Oracle for Seasons of the Witch, um, and just more recently, towards the end of the month, the Samhain Oracle Seasons of the Witch, and the Memento Mori Oracle, fantastic with the Zombie Tarot. Knew it would be. Um, I think that's all I can remember. I did use Little Wizards one time. Uh, there's a couple one-offs here and there, but those were the ones that I spent the most time with for the month of October. But that Bohemian Gothic, guys, why didn't you tell me how good it was? I mean, it's not, I couldn't have purchased it. It was out of print for the longest time, but very, very impressed and, and shocked that I was impressed in case you can't tell. So that's October, a lot. There's a lot. I hope you had this on while you were cleaning or crafting or something because I feel like this was a doozy for you guys. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me and I'll see you when I see you.